So this, um, brothers and uh, sisters, um, I'm going to open up the comments because, um, wallahi, I, I would love to know if you people, uh, you think or you have heard from Yasir Qadi, uh, yani that which uh, I haven't yet heard. For wallahi, the things that I have heard from him, it may be depressed. This has ruined my evening, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I have ruined, or this ruined my evening tonight. Um, and it wasn't a ruining of uh, I, I, where I felt um, angry. I just felt, un I felt upset, subhanAllah. I felt upset that people like this uh, individual, okay? People like this individual, they are, uh, they're misleading our brothers and sisters, okay? Um, and I felt upset because people think that he's some sort of scholar of Islam. And I felt upset because these are the days where we are living in where these types of people are seen at the forefront to or are you know seen to be at the forefront of Islamic scholarship and wallahi people will come and say oh brother can we take his sirah series can we take his uh, uh, hereafter series can we take this series and that series what don't you understand yani i i, I for me it is shocking what don't you understand if there is a well and you know that in that well there is filth, are you still going to drink from its water? If you know that in that well there is a dead animal and it's poisonous and yeah, there might be a chance that I might get a bit of unpoisoned water but you don't know because the water's clear. And maybe there's poison in there and you haven't got a clue. Will you then still drink from that well? And somebody comes and says, oh brother, but he speaks about the seer. We say, look, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That you, you know that something is evil, you know that something is dangerous, yet you still want to go and you still want to listen. And the answer is an emphatic no. You can't take from knowledge from these types of people. Yani, you want to learn about the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the life of the Rasul wasallam, from a man who can't accept his ahadith on face value. You want to learn about the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from a man, right? Who he says, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one night he was asleep and our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrates this hadith, Sahih Bukhari and others, that you know what? He woke up in a shock and he said, La ilaha illallah. He said, La ilaha illallah. Woe to the Arabs. From a from a calamity or a, a, a fitna which has come this day. And there has opened in the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj an opening like this. And he signaled with his hands like this. You want to take the hadith, uh, you want to learn about the life of the Prophet ﷺ from a man who says, you know what, this maybe what the Prophet والسلام, was referring to, maybe it's a different wall. Maybe it's a metaphoric meaning. Maybe there's, uh, maybe, you know, that was a tribe at yet Juj and Majuj's time and the wall, you know, maybe it means something else. You want to take knowledge of the life of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from this. Yani, you know, how can people be so thick? Excuse my bluntness. When it comes to buying a car, right? When it comes to buying a car, you go and you research, forget a car, when it comes to buying a hoover, a vacuum cleaner, when it comes to buying, uh, uh, when it comes to buying a pair of trainers, when it comes to buying uh, dishwashing soap, you'll do your research. When it comes to buying water, you'll do your research. When it comes to a doctor, you'll do your research and you'll be so careful. When it comes to buying any product of Amazon, you'll read the reviews and you'll be careful and you'll spend time. And yet when it comes to your religion, you want to listen to everybody who is just, uh, you know, uh, uh, eloquent. Woe to you, subhanAllah. Woe to you. Inna hadha al-ilma deenun. That this knowledge which you're taking is religion. Fanzuru amman ta'khuduna deenakum. So look to who you are taking your religion from. This knowledge which you're going to get, you're going to worship Allah according to that knowledge, that becomes your religion. So look to who you're taking your religion from. 
It's not rocket science, brothers and sisters. It's simply a case of you not taking it seriously enough. It's simply a case of you being lazy and you don't want to read the books. It's simply a case of you being lazy and you don't want to learn Arabic. It's simply a case of you being lazy and you just want a nicely packaged, nice, presentable version of Islam. It's you, you're the problem. It's not him, he's going to carry on barking. It's you who listen to him. It's you who listen to him. Take your religion seriously. Take your religion seriously the way you take your job seriously. Take your religion seriously the way you take your degree seriously. The way you give up for your degree and you give up for your job and you fall into haram for your degree. You take a riba and you take a mortgage and you do X, Y and Z. And yet when it comes to your religion, you just, yeah, whatever. I'll pray five times a day and I'll, 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 I'll listen to uh, some, some uh, lectures in the, uh, in the car from time to time. Yeah, that's fine. That's not fine. That's not going to save you from the fitna. The scholars take out from this one hadith, La ilaha illallah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it wasn't his sunnah to wake up in this way, to wake up from his sleep in this way. And so he was shocked and he was concerned for his ummah. They take from this hadith when he said, La ilaha illallah, that when a person is scared or a person is shocked, he should make dhikr of Allah. He should say, La ilaha illallah. They take from this hadith that when it is a fitna that is coming, a person finds safety and tranquility in the dhikr of Allah. So when there is fitna going on, busy yourself with the dhikr of Allah and don't get involved in the fitna. And my man takes from this hadith, no, maybe it was a different wall. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was a metaphor. And you want to listen to the seerah? Yani, I just don't understand. I don't understand how people can't see that a man's methodology is going to permeate everything that he says. A man's methodology that he holds in his heart, everything that he says is going to be coming from that angle. Everything that he says is going to have a tint or a hint of his methodology. This is why when the innovators would come to the Salaf of this Ummah, like Imam Malik and other than that, the Salaf of this Ummah, not Yasir Qadi, not Mr. You know, student of uh, Tony Blair, no, Yas not Yasir Qadi, like the likes of Imam Malik. The great a'imma of this ummah, when the innovators would come, the people of misguidance would come, do you know what they'd do? They'd take this finger and they'd take this finger and they'd put it in their ears. And they would block their ears. And they would say, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Aba Abdullah, O oh, father of, of Abdullah, meaning O oh, Imam Malik, I want to recite a, uh, uh, or, or, or Imam Ahmed, I want to recite an ayah from the Qur'an upon you. I want to recite an ayah from the Qur'an upon you. And the Imam would say, not even an ayah, not even one verse of the Qur'an will I take from you. For I fear that you're going to put onto it an interpretation It's going to cause misguidance. It's going to cause me to be misguided. These are the imma. And then us jokers come now. And we want to listen to everybody with a nice accent. We want to listen to everybody whose lectures have nice sound and a nice introduction. We want to listen to everybody who has a big following. We want to listen to everybody who has a certificate from a certain university. And we think that khalas, that's it. Is that what value you place on your religion? Wallahi, we should be ashamed. We should be ashamed. Ikhwani uh, fillah, you know what, like... This is our this is our situation in reality. This is our situation in reality. This is why we're in the mess that we're in, because we take our religion and we take it as just uh, a joke. This is you know let's be honest with ourselves, right? Many of us we take our religion as an absolute joke. We take it as a farce. Wallahi, we take it as a farce. This is why we're in the situation that we're in, and yani it's just ajib. Allah mustaan. Allah mustaan. Okay, uh, I'm going to call it a day there. Um, um, I will um, I will mention bi'idhnillahi al-kareem or I will leave it here and I will put it onto my live bi'idhnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. Okay, uh, and inshallah, um, if anybody wants to take this, I will place this also on my YouTube. هذا وصلى اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته